Milling a slot up to a shoulder will give you the ability to stop short of the program end line. Today we will discuss how you can do that by using the start and end function in the line machining units. Let's get started with today's Mazak Minute. Hi, welcome to the Mazak Minute. I'm Mike Zilich, part of the HEH technical team. In today's Mazak Minute, we're gonna talk about line machining and specifically the functions of start and end. During my classes, a lot of times people don't understand what exactly the uses are. We're gonna show that today. Let's get started. In line machining, there is going to be a way that we can have the tool start off the part as you see on the left, or be contained inside the pattern, what you see on the right-hand side being closed. In the, if you look to the middle of the screen, you're gonna see a line center unit. In that line center unit, over to the right-hand side, you're gonna see where it says start and end. This is where we're gonna be talking our topics on today. So, here we go, excessive cutting that may occur during approach or retraction can be prevented by specifying wall attribute for the line machining start and end points. The term walls are defined as the surfaces perpendicular to the shape at the, both the start and end of the points. Wall, attrib or, excuse me, wall attributes can be specified for the following units, line center, line right, line left, chamfer right, chamfer left. Line machining, just to show you a little bit what they are, when they are in the open state, both for the start and end, what you'll notice is that the tool will start off my material, okay? The program line would be from the edge of the material to the other edge, and the, uh, the approach X and uh, Y will be automatically calculated out by a value E2 away from, uh, plus the radius of the tool. For a closed, basically the gray is gonna be the material that we're programming the shape on, and the E30 is the distance that it will stay inside the contained wall. So it will start away E30 plus the radius of the tool. So what we're gonna do is, I got a couple of examples set up for us that what we're gonna do is we're gonna machine a four inch long line and we're gonna cut along the X axis. And the line profile starts at X0, Y0 or I guess that's where my datums are and that is where my line starts at. X0, Y0 with a half inch end mill. And in this example, we're gonna have the start and end both be set to the open. The tool will start off the wall attribute. So like I showed in the diagram, the approach point will be in the X axis, it'll be the radius of the cutter plus parameter E2. So in my case, a quarter inch end mill, or I mean, excuse me, half of the cutter is gonna be a quarter inch radius plus the 120. That gives me 0.37. So what we'll notice when we do the tool pass, you'll see that the X will start minus 0.370 off the part. It will also feed past the X axis by 0.370. In the unit, over here, you're seeing that the start and end are open. And after I did the tool path and ran the, uh, came back to the unit, you're noticing that the approach point here is set. So normally when I'm programming a part, you'll see in the lower bottom uh, soft key that there will be a soft key that says auto set. That will populate question marks in those approaches. Then when you run the tool path, it will come back 
and you see that right there being the negative 0.37. One tidbit to, or a bonus to see is that when you have an auto set number, the auto approach is in yellow. If you manually overwrite it, it will become white. So again, down below, below here in the uh, picture, press auto set, soft keys for the approach X and Y. So in this example, basically, right from where my cursor is right now, that is my X zero, Y zero, finishing at the line over here of four inches. So what you're seeing, the radius of the tool, plus there's a short distance there, and I could tell you that that distance is 120. That is that E2 parameter. If I look at the top screen of my position, you'll see the 370 thousandths. The bottom picture shows the feet off, and if I look at that position, you see that we're at 4.37. Example two, what we're going to do is we're going to change the start and end to a closed position. In this case, what we're going to do is the approach point will be in the x-axis, the radius of the cutter plus E30. So you see how, again, the quarter inch plus the 120. So the position, it's going to start inside the part now, a positive 370. And the exit off would be short of the 4 inch by that 370. You'll notice in the uh, diagram of the picture of the program, the approach points now are diamonds. And when it's a diamond, it means that data cannot be entered in those uh, fields. So in this tool path, you're going to see that the tool cuts, it'll start inside the part, and you're noticing that it's 370 inside, and it is short on the end by 370 as well, which 370 uh, subtracted from the 4 inches gives me that 3.63. And then there's one parameter that is important to understand, and that's going to be parameter E104 bit 3. What this does in a closed operation or a closed pattern is instead of it staying away by that E30 parameter, it will start directly on the line. So the parameter E104 bit 3 from the parameter book, uh, follow the wall attribute setting of the unit if that is bit is set to a zero. If it's set to a one, the approach to a program start and escape from the program end, regardless of the wall attribute, will start directly there. Parameter E104 bit three can be adjusted per the unit of a program using the TPC. Um, in a previous uh, Mazak Minute, we explored how TPC works and I recommend that you take a look at that video. So the procedure in order to change the E104 bit three, we're going to go to the program edit mode, cursor to the unit, tap on the unit name, go to the TPC at the top, go to parameters, and what you'll notice in the parameters is the bottom part of the parameters, E104. Here's a little bit blown up view of it. The E104 is a 8-bit parameter. So what I would like you to do is first click on the E104 parameter, and then you're going to come down to your soft key that says bit input. I want to go over, you're seeing now that the bits, they're from right to left, it goes from bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it makes it handy having this uh, soft key be 
uh, for every bit. So I'm going to cursor over to bit three, and I'm going to change it, and I'm going to highlight it. And what you'll notice on the uh, upper section of the E104, you'll notice how it's yellow. So that's always in a parameter. It's nice to see that if it's yellow, that means it's different than what's set on the uh, hard, hard uh, settings of the parameters. What we'll do then next is we're going to go back to the bit input and we're going to turn off the bit input. And that's going to bring me back where I can actually see now on the soft keys, TPC end. I'm going to go ahead and press that and that's going to return me back to the uh, program. And again, for a TPC, you'll notice to the left of the unit number that you'll have the blue box with the white plus sign. That means that that TPC is active. Then when you run through it, you can see how that the TPC now, on the four inch that we have this TPC set, the beginning of the part, it is ignoring the E30. So if I come over here and I look at where the position is, it's starting right on the X0, Y0 where I wanted. Finally, down below on the exit, it goes back to the four inch number and you see the four inch position right here in the position screen. So a summary, this is a nice uh, chart that I got out of, uh, or diagram I got out of the uh, operating manual. Basically the tool path is determined according to the setting of E104 bit three. E104 bit three equal to zero with the attribute being open. You'll see that the tool center point or the start point is the radius of the tool plus E2 parameter away from my program line. If the attribute is closed and e, E104 bit three is a zero, E30 is effective. You'll see that the tool will stay away from the wall, E30. So a lot of times if you're programming up against a shoulder or a wall, you can program to the edge of the tool and you have it stay away from the wall by E30. And finally, the lower tool path, this is where it is closed, which you see here, as far as the attribute. And we come down below, we set E104 bit three to a one in the TPC. And your tool path, your start point, starts right on your beginning of your figure line and ends right at the end of the figure line. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at the control itself. What I've done here is I've programmed three different units. The first one at the top of the part is going to be an open. The second one will be a closed. And finally, the third one towards the bottom will be a closed with the E104 uh, parameter set. So if I come down to unit number two, we see that we have the start and end over here, both set to open. And here's my figure line, a line starting at zero, Y one inch, going to four inches, one inch. Let's go take a quick look at that tool path if I come back over here, part shape, we're gonna see the three different toolpath lines. And if I do a path step, notice how the tool is starting off of the part from the programmed line of zero, zero. As I step through it, you're gonna see that it feeds onto the part, feeds off, and it feeds off to that 370 thousandths off the part. I'm gonna go back to my program now. Let's go take a look at the third unit, which in the third unit, what we did is I came over here, program edit, and I come over to the start and end. And again, you see how the soft keys both say open, closed, and I chose closed. 
the approach points become diamonds, so I can't put the uh, data in that field. And when I go do a program complete, and I'm gonna go do a restart now on the toolpath. So I'm gonna do part shape first. And I'm going to hit my far right arrow key, path restart, and I'm gonna start on the third unit. Come down here, say okay. And you'll see the restart, it will have the unit for you. Far right arrow key. And I'm gonna do a path step. Now notice, and again, I made all these lines the same length, but you see how now that tool right here is staying away from that edge by parameter E30. Typically from Mazak, E2 and E30 is set to a 12, which is 120 thousandths. As the tool, as I step through the rest of it, you'll see that it feeds and it stays short of the four inch by that 370 thousandths, which is that 3.63 dimension. Let's go ahead and come back up to the program. And now what we're gonna go look at is I have the fourth unit here set with the TPC. Again, to get to the TPC, I'm gonna go to program edit, be cursored on the unit name, come up to your top of your screen where next to the question mark where you have the uh, tool with a line as a tool path. I'm gonna click on that and that's gonna bring me over to the parameters. You'll notice, like I said earlier, E104, that bit, it's in yellow right now because I already have set it. But if I come over here, just so we can see how you get to the bit inputs, you're cursored on the eight bits, you come down to your soft key of bit input, and that's gonna show me the eight bits across and I would have to trigger the bit three. In my case, I'm gonna leave it on. I'm gonna come back to bit input, and then I'm gonna to go to TPC end. Let's go run the tool pass so we see that now. If I hit my far right arrow key, program complete, tool path, part shape, we're gonna hit the far right arrow key. I'm gonna do path restart. And this time I'm gonna restart on the fourth unit. Say okay. Far right arrow key, path step. And what you're gonna notice is right here is that the tool will start directly on the line that we programmed. So it's starting at X zero, Y minus one. As it feeds over, as I hit path step, notice that as it feeds across, it stops right on my sequence line of where I told the line to finish. So this gives us a lot of control over how the tool path, uh, the approach and escape points work. It all comes down to how you set the start and end in the line sequence or line unit. Thanks for watching the Mazak Minute. If you have any comments or any future episodes you'd like me to cover, please leave it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching the Mazak Minute.